Hello everyone, my name is Paul Brochessen and today I'm going to show you how you can install the MLOps plugin for Houdini. The first thing that we need to do is of course download the plugin. We can do this by going to bismuth.at slash MLOps like that and just hit enter or we can Google MLOps Houdini on Google and we should be able to find this repository. The first thing that we of course need to do is download the plugin to our machine. And we can do this by clicking the green code button here and using our preferred method of downloading the plugin. You can either use you know, Git in Bash, you can use some visual client to download uh, the repository and clone it, or you can simply download the zip file. So use your preferred method of downloading the repository and just put it in an empty folder. Okay, so in my case, I have already downloaded the repository, which is what we see here, okay? So I had created an empty folder called MLOps. I have cloned the repository in here, put all the files in there, you know, which is different depending on which options you choose. For a zip file, you would simply extract it. Uh, but for now, we have all these files on disk. The next thing that we need to do is we need to copy this MLOps.json file here and just copy it, okay? So control C. And then we're going to our Houdini user preferences directory. Depending on the platform you are on, this may be in different locations, but for Windows, this will be in Documents, Houdini 19.5, or a different version, depending on when you watch this video, and then go into the folder called Packages. If you do not have this folder called Packages, you can simply create it by making a new folder with all lowercase letters describing the word Packages. Once we have that, we can paste in our JSON file there, in my case, I already have it, but I'm going to overwrite it. And then we're going to open it up in some text editor. Once we open it up, we're gonna see something like this, okay? What we need to do is we need to modify one of these paths in this file. So go back to the location where you have downloaded your um, repository, right? So in my case, it'll be in uh, MLOps GitHub, like this. Right, this folder where you have either extracted your files or you have cloned your repository to. Simply copy this path, right, of where the root of your repository is and just paste it in here. So in this case, we're going to swap the backward slashes with forward slashes like that. And then we are going to hit save. Now, once we've hit saved, we're going to launch Houdini by just clicking the launch button just like that. Once Houdini has started, we should be able to click on the little plus here, go to shelves, and then find the option called MLOps. Once you click that and enable it, you should now have a new shelf enabled in your toolbar. What we're going to do first, before we can start using the actual nodes, is we need to make sure that all the dependencies that the plugin uses are properly installed. So to do that, we're going to click this first button here that says install dependencies. So simply click that, which is going to open up a little prompt like this uh, that is going to be downloading some files to your machine. Depending on your speed of the internet, this may take a little while to complete. This is also a thing that we only need to do once, the very first time when we install the plugin. If you skip this step, you will not be able to properly use the toolset in Houdini. Okay, so once it is done, we should be able to see this pop up here where it asks us to please restart Houdini for it to take effect. Okay, so we're going to do that by just closing Houdini, closing the launcher, starting the launcher again, and then simply launching a new instance of Houdini. So now that we have our dependencies installed, uh, you may think that you're now able to go into the geometry um, context, right, SOPs, and start playing around with MLOps. Unfortunately, this is not yet possible because we need to also download some models to work with. Now, in order to download a model, a default model that we can use to work with, we can actually click this set second button here called download model. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up this little prompt here where we are able to specify a model name uh, that we would like to start using and downloading to our disk. Now, by default, as you can see, it is going to be installing Stable Diffusion 2.1, which is a download of about 50 gigabytes, and it's going to download this into the folder called MLOps Models. Now, if we look at our JSON, we can see that MLOps model, Models is actually located in MLOps slash checkpoints. Now, if we go to MLOps slash checkpoints, which is in our repository root, we can see that we have a text file that says drop your custom checkpoints here, which allows us to place 
checkpoints that you may have already used in the past into this folder and you can start using it. Additionally, you can of course also change the value of MLOps models to be somewhere else where you have stored models on disk. Now, by default, you can see that we also have a variable called MLOps model without the S at the end, which is the model that the nodes will start using by default. And this is going to be the checkpoint slash stability AI slash stable diffusion 2.1, which in my case, I have already downloaded. But for you, if you're new to Stable Diffusion in general, what I would recommend is just leave these values to default and just click the download button. Once you've clicked this download button, you can see that it is going to be downloading a lot of files to disk, which for about 50 or 60 gigabytes can take quite a bit. As you can see here, it's going to take about half an hour on my machine. So make sure that you go and do something fun while this is downloading. So now that we have it downloaded, we can actually go to SOPS, right? So drop down a geometry node and then create, for example, a prompt create, right? Which is the node that allows you to create prompts. And then we're going to create a tokenizer. Now I'm not going to be showing you the nodes themselves, but what I want to show you is that some of the nodes, for example, the tokenizer, not the prompt create, but the tokenizer, which needs to evaluate, you know, the input and output with the attributes that come into it with a model. Now, in this case, as you can see, the parameter called tokenizer model has been set to mlops underscore model without the S, right? So single. And what we can see in our JSON is that mlops underscore model by default is set to be this stability AI slash stable diffusion 2.1, which is of course the model that we have downloaded, right? The 50 gigabytes one. Now, however, let's say you have a model that lives somewhere else on disk. How do you make sure that you use that model? Well, what you can do is you can change this variable here to simply point to a folder on disk that has uh, the model that you would like to use. So in our case, if we were to go to our checkpoints folder here, we could go into this folder, we could copy it like that, put our display flag on there so we know that the node is evaluating, and we could just paste the path of our model there. And you can see that this will also work. Now. The other thing that we can do instead of just passing in a path is we can go to the website hoggingface.co and then click on the button here that says models and then go to text to image, click on this button here, and we can see lots of different models that we may want to use in our system. For example, if we want to use the runaway slash stable diffusion 1.5 model and we want to use this in Houdini, what we could do is we could simply copy this name here, right? So runaway slash stable diffusion 1.5 and we could simply paste that value in here. And what the node will do is if you don't have it downloaded yet, it is actually going to download it for you. Now, in my case, I already have it on disk, so it's not going to do anything. But if you wouldn't have this model on disk yet, make sure that you untick this box that says local cache. And what that is going to do is whenever you specify a model name in this format, right, from this website here, it is going to check if it already exists on disk and if it doesn't, it is going to download it into this folder that we looked at, the checkpoints folder. And by doing that, it allows us to switch between different models that we have already downloaded. So, so as you can see, you have various ways of using this parameter, either point it to a model that lives on disk, a full path, or specify a path like this, right? A library that exists on Hugging Face and the system will download it, but it will only do that when local cache is turned off. If local cache is turned on, it will assume that these files that live here already exist on disk and it's not going to look for updates. But if you have this turned on and your model does not exist on disk, you may get errors. So whenever it doesn't work, try unchecking this box and you should be good to go. Enjoy using this plugin.